So, hello everybody. <coughs> so it's the last uh, last round of session about like the societal topics for today, right? I hope you enjoyed your day. Did you enjoy your day? Yeah, perfect, perfect. So we we made our mission. Yeah. Uh, so now, so we uh, like every API Days conference, we finish by a topic that really talks about the future and how to make the software more sustainable. It can be socially, it can be technically. Right, more resilient. And now, uh, since the last year, uh, we've decided to take the, this moment to make it to talk about environment, right? And the impact that IT and software is doing, but how we can align the both, right? You know, how we can make it software sustainable, technically, socially, and environmentally. So we will address that last topic now. And we're really pleased to have uh, Maxim, right, uh, from the Shift Project. So the Shift Project, you will tell a little bit more, is an influential organization about like how to uh, remove uh, dioxide carbon from the economy, right? I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it well, right? Uh, but not only, it's a global thinking and we're really, really glad to have him as a keynote really to explain uh, uh, his vision and the vision of the Shift Project and especially about ICT, like information uh, technologies. And after we'll have a panel with uh, uh, influencers in, in the domain with I think outstanding explanations uh, about what's happening and so it will be also interactive with your questions. So now it's time for Maxim to uh, present on stage. I will ask you to make a uh, warm but not so warm to make it to stay sustainable, right? <laughs> Applause for Maxim, thank you. So yes, thank you for being here. Uh, so I'm going to present basically what we what we did about uh, what we call digital sobriety. Um, so I'm going to like talk about the Chief Project, what 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 we do, uh, and what our goals are. Uh, and after that, I'm going to try to explain, like as clearly as possible, uh, what we found and what we think about the role that ICT and and digital technologies uh, have and can have. Um, I mean, in in the global context that, 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 that we live in today. So, so my name is Maxime Efrias. I'm project manager at the Shift Project, uh, especially on digital technologies. Um, and uh, I've been part of, yes, all of our projects uh, since three years. We, we have uh, started to ask the question of the place of digital technologies in, in the carbon transition. So the Shift Project is an association uh, which aims to to serve the general interest. So basically, we're trying to make good to do good things. Um, so the first thing we do is uh, informing uh, the debate about the carbon transition. What we're trying to do is to build some some big bases with numbers, with figures, uh, with scientific approaches, which which could help the decision making into which would have the decision making to be to be really relevant that's why we what that's what we're trying to do we're trying to build a strong basis which can allow our decisions today uh, or strategic decisions to be uh, yes to be relevant to be to we want to make sure that the way we choose um, to change our economy towards uh, a, a low carbon economy uh, are the right ones. And for that, we are, we are asking to experts, to, to people who basically know what they're doing, uh, know their, so their subject, their topics, uh, and, and we are building uh, reports and studies with the expertise, the state of the art of the knowledges about different topics. So once we have done that, we make proposals, um, proposals which we bring to, to the decision makers. Um, so those decision makers can be in the economic world, in the political world, uh, but basically anybody which is likely to make a decision one day which could have effect on an activity, on an economic activity. What we are trying to do is, once again, to push those decisions in the right way to be sure that at the end, at the very end, um, we have done the right choices. The right choices, uh, that means that those choices will lead to an actual um, uh, diminution, uh, reduction, sorry, of, of the carbon emissions of our economy. So that's 
basically our two axes, what, what we do. About uh, who funds us, so uh, it's an association of companies and, and those companies give money uh, for like helping the transition. Why are we doing that? Basically because um, if you consider that planetary boundaries are something you have to deal with, but it's not something you can debate about because it's just like physics. So we can debate about physics, but it doesn't make really very much sense. So, so if those boundaries are something we have to deal with, so our systems will have to deal with those boundaries. So it's actually um, just a strategic issue. It, it's a strategic considerations. So every single company have to think about how their business model is compatible with those constraints how they are going to build a, a different business model, a, a new business model, something which is compatible with those constraints. Why? Because that's just natural limits. So um, that's where, that, that's our starting point. If those limits, and I'm going to repeat that a lot uh, during this pitch, uh, if those limits are something we can't uh, debate about, so we just have to think how are we going to make to make up an economy, a, a model, which is compatible with them. And so that's basically why they are funding us. So we work uh, with and, and towards uh, the, the creation of, of different spin-off uh, and, and partnership because we want to ask the question of carbon transition to every single um, aspect of our economy. So, so because it's about it's about buildings, it's about IT, it's about uh, academic world uh, and and financial. So 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 that's what we are trying to do. We we are really trying to ask the question to every different agents of the different sectors uh, of our economy. So that's like an overview of of what the Shift Project do uh, does. Sorry, uh, and and so I'm going now to to explain what what digital technologies can can do what what digital what do, what the role of digital technologies uh, is uh, in in this whole transition in this whole dynamic of of the carbon transition so the question we asked was this one so uh, are those technologies an asset or a challenge for uh, the carbon transition that's like the very first question the answer is yes and no because it just depends on how you use the tools so the tools itself doesn't say anything about what you are going to do with it so uh, here uh, is like the process we we follow to to try to answer this question so it's a question of balance uh, we know about the opportunities uh, for common transition of digital technologies, of us, of us technology. So it's about smart grid, smart building, smart something. It's about um, it's about all those technologies and, and services which can help us to to monitor our, our uh, energy consumption or, or carbon emissions. So that's about the, the, the that yeah, that's about the opportunities. But every single technology um, costs something. It has an environmental cost in terms of resources, of energy, uh, uh, and uh, uh, of emissions. Why? Because you, you, can't, you can't do anything or, or build anything or produce anything without using energy and natural resources. But that's once again physics. So the question is, um, how is the balance at, at the end? So uh, those technologies, are they actually helping us to reduce um, or uh, our emissions, or is the environmental cost more um, yeah more important than, than the opportunities than, than, than what it, it, it helps uh, to do? So the idea is at least to to have a flat balance. Uh, so, so I mean the true goal is is, is obviously uh, to to have opportunities which which are which wait more. Uh, but the idea is that we need to. Think about that balance uh, at every single step of the way we build our digital technologies, our digital systems and services, to be sure that, once again, at the end, we have the right balance, a positive balance. So here are um, what we found and built, the figures we built. Um, they're describing 
the digital share of, of uh, GHG emission in the world um, uh, of digital technologies. So in 2019, digital technologies represent 4% of the, like the whole emissions in the world. 4% is it's, it's more than, than uh, uh, civil aviation. That means that digital technologies aren't something, are, are something tangible, but something, it has a true materiality, but it's not something virtual. So, yes, the idea is that um, those technologies, because we need to build them, to produce them, and then to use them, we need energy, it requires, it emits something, it emits carbon in the atmosphere, and so uh, this represents 4%, so this is not, uh, this is not nothing, actually. Um, uh, so, the idea is uh, uh, that those technologies are something we need to think uh, about. We need to think about how we are going to build them. And so, we, we build some scenarios to try to understand how um, the, the emissions linked to, to those technologies can, can evolve uh, in, in the five coming years. And so, uh, in 2025, the business as usual scenarios can lead to seven to eight percent uh, of the worldwide emissions in the world um, linked so to digital uh, technologies. Uh, it is nearly as much as cars and, uh, and, and, and motorbikes. So once again, this means that digital technologies is a issue um, uh, as cars. This is not something we can like just push somewhere uh, because it's just an asset for common transition. Digital technologies have an actual role uh, I inside this whole dynamics of transition, and, and we need to think about it and to think to think about how we are going to build it. The last scenario, the stability scenario, is about um, is about thinking, is about exploring how we could manage. Um, this this evol yeah this evolution of, of the emissions of of, uh, of the emissions due to carbon uh, to sorry digital technologies, so the stability scenario just shows that we can we can manage those emissions without uh, in the first place questioning the very very um, the business model the, the model of digital technologies. This scenario isn't enough to to, to be compatible with uh, the Paris Agreement, to the T degree trajectories, uh, but it allows us to break the particular dynamics uh, that she, what, which, which the digital technologies uh, are about. Uh, today, emissions due to digital technologies grow at a rate of 8% a year. At the world uh, scale, um, the world emissions grow by between two and three percent a year. So that means that those technologies are growing at a much higher rate than, than our, our, our global economy. That, that's a particular sector. That's something which is not like the other, other technologies, other sectors, other economic sectors. Our sobriety scenario is just something which shows that we can, um, we can like, pull up uh, this, this uh, growing of 8% a year to 2 or 3% a year, like the rest of the world. It just shows that today, digital technologies have a carbon footprint which is growing fast. And we can, we can like grab it and, and, and take control, take, back, uh, take the control back of, of, those, of those evolutions uh, just by thinking about how we are using those technologies. And so, yeah, the, the, the starting point of, uh, uh, of this consideration is this one, digital sobriety, which is about thinking about how we are using those technologies, uh, is the only viable solutions in the short or medium term. Why? Because if you just, um, if you just improve the efficiency of what you're doing, you're going to use it more, uh, and, and then you're going to consume more energy at the very end. Uh, that's how our world works, because that's how our brains works, and that's how nature works. So, so we have to think about 
what we can do uh, in a technological way, I mean, to, to improve uh, our, our, co our energy consumption, but we have to think about how are we using those technologies in order to make them, to make the whole system compatible with the trajectories we have built. And so that's what we call digital sobriety. So, is it working? Yes. So, um, so the first thing is this one: uh, digital energy, uh, digital uh, energy consumption grows at a much um, at a much higher rate than the world uh, energy consumption. Um, and today, this is not compatible with the physical constraints, uh, with carbon constraints, with energy constraints, with availability of different resources. It, it, it's just not compatible. So, if we let um, the whole system the whole digital system evolve like it does today, we will have to face some like serious dangers um, regarding its, its own reliability. The second thing is that digital opportunities exist. That's not a question. Of course, digital technologies are something we need to, to, to reduce the challenges of, of its century. Uh, this is not a debate. The debate is about how, how are we going to use those technologies? Because today, we are we are digitalizing everything without thinking about how and why. Uh, and the thing is that at global scale today, uh, the digitalization of the world does not, does not result in a reducing of our carbon emissions. The carbon emissions of the world are still growing. So the question is why, how do we do that? How are we using, uh, uh, this magical tool uh, um, without, without, without getting any, any, anything from it. So the very, yes, the question, true question is how are we going to use them in order to, to, to fulfill uh, the objectives? That's why the digital technologies and digital transitions is something that needs to be built and, 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 and to be thought about. So digital sobriety, uh, it's uh, um, first of all uh, uh, an objective. So it aims to safeguard the opportunities of digital technologies. It really aims to do that. We know that there are a lot of opportunities um, which are allowed to uh, buy those technologies and, when, and we want to use the resources it needs to be built and to be settled uh, in order to be sure that we, we, we will be able to, to use them. So that's the, the true objective. Um, it raises a question. How do we build the whole system, the whole digital system? Um, how do we use them to make them resilient, to make them able to be compatible with the constraints coming, um, and, and, and to be sure that we are going to be, to be able to, yeah, to continue to use them in the future? So that's the question. And this question is raised because the constraints are once again not debatable. So we really need to, like, to really like, um, uh, uh, go for it with in mind that those physical constraints are something we, we, we can debate of. And so it leads to, to change the way we, we, we approach uh, like the whole thing. Uh, innovation is not, it is not about just doing every idea, everything that just crosses our mind. Innovation is really about answering challenges. Uh, it's about Asking a question, uh, identifying a need, some, something uh, that we need to answer, and, and build a solution, build something that will be able to answer that. And this changing of, of position can lead to what we call digital sobriety and to something much, far, much efficient, far, far more efficient. Um, so the idea is that the carbon transition needs those technologies first. There's no debate uh, about this, but every digital tool or services uh, has an environmental impact because we need energy to build and to use it. So where is the balance? And we need for each of these tools um, to be sure that the balance is on the, on the blue side. We need to be sure that the energy we used to produce the technologies, the infrastructures, um, uh, and the tools in order to, 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 to make a service possible, to, to, to gain something on, on an energy, on energy scale or, or, emission or carbon emissions, we need to be sure that the energy we used is 
less important than the energy we saved for each of the services, each of the idea we have. Of course, there are uh, so societal dimensions which can be quantified. So, um, yes, it's a question. The, the question of the usefulness of what we are doing is, is of course, um, more complex than, than just waiting things. Uh, but the idea is to keep in mind that every single thing we do and, and we build has an environmental cost, and that we need to be sure that the resources we use, that it's worth it, because we don't have unlimited resources. So we, 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 just, we just have to be sure that it's worth it. And so, just to understand uh, what we call like a system of uses, um, and, 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 and what, what the real questions are uh, when we are talking about how do we use those technologies. Um, so, our users are built between, by the interaction of two components. The first one is the design of the tools we use. It's like a collective scale uh, users building. Um, it, that's how we design our tools in order to influence some, some users, in order to, 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 yes, to push our users in, in a certain way. Um, and then that's why at individual scale, we use those tools in the way we, we use them. So you use something because it has a certain design and also because you want to use this uh, in this way. But this is two components you have to keep in mind. And if you have these two components in mind, you can understand what, what it means to think about how we, um, we build our systems. Because we need to have an objective and to think about how are we going to reach that objective and to think about, okay, um, we have both constraints, we have this objective. Um, how am I going to make people use these tools in order to fulfill this objective? And this is nothing new. Just if we apply this to carbon transition, it, it can lead to something very interesting um, about, about the usefulness of us, of us digital technologies in order to, to to fulfill the carbon transition. Because you have different constraints, you have of course the economic constraints, but today we know, and we know how to quantify them, um, new limits, uh, they aren't new, but they're new to us. So we, knew that we know now that we need to limit our carbon emissions in order to safeguard our own systems, because that's the only goal. Um, we need to save energy because we need, once again, to safeguard our own systems. And, and we need to, to be sure that there's enough metals or mineral resources to, to continue to build those things, to build these screens and, 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 and everything. We need to be sure of that, to make sure of that. And so once we have all those constraints in mind, we can think about how we're going to build our designs in order to make, to create a system of use which is going to be compatible with with this whole thing, with the whole constant thing. So it's just about optimizing the, the whole thing. Uh, it's just about considering the whole system and thinking, okay, this, systems, this system induces some, some behaviors. We have to think about how and, and, and why and how to induce the right behaviors and, and, and to build the right infrastructures in order to, to, to be, yes, to be, to be able to, to, to address uh, the carbon tra challenges. And so, um, and this is my last slide, uh, this century calls for true innovation. Um, this is, uh, really, we really think that this is not about, anymore, about uh, building maybe a connected condom. I mean, this is funny, but it, it uses resources. It requires resources to build a connected condom. And we need those resources to Yes, to address challenges of this century. So this century is about identifying the challenges, the true challenges, and to make sure that we have enough resources to address them. Once we have done that, okay, we can build the, the, the connected condom with what rests, but just make sure that we have enough uh, resources, human resources, energy resources, and, and carbon budget to build efficient things and, and useful things. And I think that, um, that this is what this is the true motivation of, of innovation. It's not about 
building some gadget. It's about uh, changing the world, like doing something useful, doing something that, that we have a real impact. So that's, that's why we, we, we spend our days uh, thinking about what can be new, what, 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 what new service can I, can I, yeah, can I make up? Uh, and so my last sentence is this one. I think that the true meaning of innovation comes from like the challenges that it answers to from the context. And today the context is about making sure that our civilization um, is able to, to address the challenge of carbon transition, of environmental transition, and to be sure that our systems will be compatible in the future and, and maybe forever uh, with the physical constraints it exists in. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have a panel right after where Maxim will be participating. But if you have one question or one qu or two now, uh, you know, so you don't have to wait. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Um, I have two questions. Um, you said that um, for now the carbon emission is still growing, and that, that's a fact. But uh, I was wondering if in your study you quantified how much the digital technologies are directly responsible for the carbon emission in other sectors and how much it could uh, help in the scenarios, in future scenarios, how much it could help to reduce the carbon emission of other sectors as well. Thank you. So, uh, yes, it is a question we asked, but it's actually very difficult to quantify that at global scale because there's a lot of variables and a lot of hypotheses we have to, to take into account. So, um, so the approach we, we chose is to make like the whole thing at global scale for the environmental costs because it's just about counting things. So, so that's kind of easy to do. Uh, I mean, it, it took two years, but that's kind of easy to do. Uh, and, and for the other part about how digital technologies can help to reduce emissions, um, the right approach the only one which could be relevant is to f think about it in um, for every different case. So you need when you want to digitalize something to to to, to yes to to make up a new service or a new technology. You have to think about in this particular case uh, with this technology. Um, uh, what do I need to quantify to be sure to make sure that the whole thing will be like the positive balance. And that's what we are trying to do right now. Uh, so we have a second report which is, uh, which is supposed to be, to be released next year. And the idea is to build like a set of methodologies, uh, of approaches, of questions actually. You need to ask yourself before um, putting a service into practice or a technology to, to, to make sure, yes, that this balance is on the blue side. Thank you, Maxim. So we will set up the, the stage for, for the panel that you yes. will be participating, right? So, but we can have a, a, good, a strong applause for Maxim. Thank you.